I welcome you in Anesthesia and ICU News. I am Martin and you probably want to know how to really ace EDAIC examination and hear real tips and tricks for the exam from somebody who actually did it. So let's stop this small talk and get to the work. Starting with some organization facts, European Diploma of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care is a certificate that you can obtain after a successful pass of two exams. The first one is written on a paper or computer, and the second one is oral with face-to-face -face examinators. The exam is a part of European Society of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care. Don't get confused with European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, which has its own exam called EDIC. This just to be clear. Acceptance of this exam is increasing every year throughout the European and non-European countries. In some countries, like Austria, it is necessary to attend the exam and its successful accomplishment will ease the trainee's next step in gaining specialty. Some countries have this exam mandatory, for example, if you want to become an anesthesiologist in Malta, you have to pass both part 1 and part 2 to become a specialist anesthesiologist. And interestingly, for example, Argentina has recognition for part 1, even though it's not in Europe, and this exam can be done even in centers outside the Euro. This is just interesting consideration. Today we will be focusing on part 1, how to prepare most efficiently for this exam as possible and ideally how to earn some cool knowledge on the way there. EDAIC part 1 is a test with multiple choices divided in two parts. Part A is preclinical and part B is clinical. For both of them you have two hours if you are doing them on paper or one and a half hour if you are doing them on computer. Between them you have time to grab some lunch and stress out for a few minutes. In each part you will have 60 questions with 5 choices so you have to do 300 decisions that equals 300 points in each part, 600 in total. I need to highlight an obvious fact. Well, it is a test. One more time, it is a test. So, if you want to get better in it, you need to do sample test questions. It is the same principle like with intubation. You will not get better if you are not intubating somebody every single day. You will need to do sample questions to get familiar with them. The very first most important thing that I can highly recommend to you is to find official sample questions and study them properly as these are extremely similar to the real ones. Disadvantage for them is that they have no official right answer so it is up to you or your senior colleagues to try your best and answer them. Secondary, if the sample questions ask about, for example, function of the carotid bodies, or I don't know, that reading about, for example, this funny structure would be quite smart decision as they can ask you the very similar question, technically from the same topic. Now let's address the elephant in the room, and that's the question banks. First comes 1000 practical multiple choice questions for primary and finally FRCA by Dr. Ebrahim, published in 2019. This book is focused to prepare you for UK exam, which is to some extent similar to the EDAIC. I recommend reading and solving this book not only for exam preparation, but it helps you with clinical practice as there are multiple important concepts nicely explained. Even though you are not preparing for FRCA or EDAIC, try to look up this book, because it's definitely handy. If there should be one source that you should study for EDAIC, it should be this book, and you will have solid chance to pass. Next point for consideration is that this book has a chapter focused on physics and statistics, which of course is one of the most popular topics and every clinician is looking forward to it. But if you truly love statistics, then ignore my subtle sarcasm. Honestly, I've enjoyed physics, you can see it in my results, but I'm not very proud of my statistics score. Even if you are planning exam maybe in several months or next year, my advice is to start to read this book even now. Slowly go through these questions as you can earn some interesting knowledge. It is never too soon to get familiar with this style of questions that are waiting for you. What about this advantage of this book? I simply had the feeling that this book has a fewer practical ICU questions, but it's reasonable to say that the name of this publication is Anesthesia and not ICU. Second question book that I've read during my preparation is Critical Care Multiple Choice Question by Stephen Lobas, published in 2015. This one is purely focused on clinical practice in the ICU. Many of the problems that you will see here are applicable to the clinical practice, so definitely worth reading. 
Unfortunately, I must say, both of these books are a little bit outdated. Now you can ask, should I read them? My answer is, if you have the option, definitely yes, you should. With the understanding that new change concept about sepsis management, or ketamine for example, can be a little bit different, and I strongly advise you to check updated sources. But I have something for you that can at least partially solve this problem, and that is this platform, oneexamination.com. You can find there more updated questions. These are originally focused again for FRCA exam. There are two options, primary and finally FRCA. But for you who are preparing for EDAIC part one, you need to know both preclinical and clinical knowledge at the same time, at the same day. These questions were handy for me for additional practice during the last weeks of preparation as I ran out of questions and I wanted some new ones. From my perspective, these questions were nice and quite updated, so I'm recommending them for you so you can dive into them. Your next option to boost your ICU field can be with Critical Care Multiple Choice Question by Dr. Zipre, published in 2023. This is a new book. Unfortunately, I had not the chance to read it yet because it went out after my EDAIC exam. I'm mentioning it here because I personally hate outdated sources and this book can help you solve this problem with outdated question banks. Next book on the list will be Fundamentals of Anesthesia by Ted Lin, published in 2016. This is an easy to read overview book focused for preclinical problems in anesthesiology. So, for example, if you need to boost your pharmacology or physiology knowledge, reading just dedicated chapter from this book will give you stable understanding. I would like to take one step back to physics, as this book has again insight on essential of physical principles that are useful for anesthesiologists, like how vaporizers work, what are the different different anesthetic circuits and similar problems that are sometimes neglected. These two books together, I've already mentioned, will give you a strong grasp of these concepts. And I would like to highlight that it is not necessary to read this whole book as it is. I assume many of you have already knowledge in preclinical area. Consider this book much more like additional source in case you have some specific weaknesses and you need to review some chapters. Then this book is definitely good for you. I assume I don't have to introduce Oxford Handbook of Anesthesia that you all are, are very familiar with. This one is fully focused on clinical practice. If you don't have one, then I assume shame on you. Anyway, let's move on to the AMBOS. This platform maybe some of you don't know. AMBOS provides extremely comprehensive and at the same time so simple to read and understand knowledge that is focused primary for medical students or junior doctors. This platform emphasizes the knowledge around USMLE exams and I personally use it when I need to refresh my knowledge on some internal medicine problems that I knew when I was a med student and now the knowledge is probably somewhere in the back of my head. In other words, AMBOS is in my eyes essential for multidisciplinary specialties like anesthesiology or intensive care medicine. Plus, AMBOS provides an excellent anatomy review with pictures for EDAIC or FRCA. That is something that you don't expect when you are looking for sources like this. When you should start a preparation? In my eyes, it is good to start as soon as you decide to go for the exam and start slowly analyzing questions so sooner you can become familiar with them. It is always possible to take a few days off or to slow down your learning, but it is much more difficult to speed up your process if you are running out of time. I will advise you to take maybe more time than less, taking into consideration that this exam costs you your money and is once per year. It is wise to go there prepared. And now my personal approach and strategy for answering. I was doing this test on a paper, so I had two hours for 60 questions or 300 decisions, as each possible answer need to be evaluated as a true or false. I've decided to make technically two readings. First, I went through my questions and wrote my initial answers on my question paper, on which you can write anything your heart desires. This phase took me around 70 minutes, and after that I've started to rewrite my answers to official answer sheet and double-checking mainly problematic questions. In both papers, A and B, I've logically proceeded the same way, and it would be reasonable if you will not change your tactic in the middle of the test, so just stick to your main plan. Of course, the strategy depends on your English level or the level of the language in which you are taking the exam. But don't worry, two hours are enough for you to go through the question first time properly and second time with the focus on the problematic ones. You will probably have some form of a clock in the room so you can track your progress and the remaining time left. 
and in the end, I would like to mention official sources from ESAIC and my opinion on them. Are they worth it? Consider that I am a member of this society. There exists ESAIC Academy that requires you to pay some extra money after you are a member already. And after I did so, in my view, the learning platform was not very user-friendly, overall quality of the videos were not stunning, and the knowledge that I gained, well, let's say you can get it by different way, more smoothly. Because of these reasons, I've decided to not purchase the basic and clinical sciences anesthetic course, which should be somehow much more focused on EDAIC preparation. So, unfortunately, I don't know what knowledge and by what quality is hidden there. On the other hand, as a member of the ESAIC, you have access to European Journal of Anesthesiology and three others. And generally speaking, journals were, are and will be the primary source of updated information. Of course, they are not always time efficient and often hard to read to get some specific information. But we can say for sure that these journals are of high quality and are definitely worth your attention, just to update your knowledge. And last thing you should be aware of, there exists the sample test for evaluation of your strength and weaknesses. If you have any whatsoever doubts of your knowledge level, then this would be a handy option for you to check out. And this is everything from me. Thank you for watching. Hope you all perform well on the exam. If you have any questions, leave comments down below and steady hands for cannulation.